So, um, God, I feel weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, there's one thing I definitely want to say at the very beginning, and in some ways it's sort of unusual because I to, to, um, to celebrate the beginning because you've asked your PhD, and I, I have to. You might, you might agree with me, I have the pleasure and the privilege of being. Oh, I do agree. Them. And I just really wanted to say, oh, I thought we should all really just say, I know religion college have, but I thought it would be really nice just to say something, you know, mark it now to really congratulate that. For two reasons. For two reasons. I think, first and foremost, because, yeah, it's no mean thing to have done at the it's a fantastic work. We're going to talk about the work. But I think also, you, 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 you've really led you know, in, in your education space and, and you know, you've got really space in that space. And I think to have managed to do all of that, I, I, I'm just in awe and I just think it's really fantastic. So, yeah, on that note, congratulations. Thanks, Sonny. <laughs> um, and that was just a bit of a Yeah, well, <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. So let, let's, get, let's get into the, the, your work because um, I think what my, I know. Some colleagues will may work more closely than others. Sure. I thought maybe it'd be nice just to open up a little bit about what were some of the problems that you were seeing early on going back and that, that kind of led you into wanting to make some change in the new kind of development of the So just maybe just kind of foreground some of the things that were nagging me early on. Sure. So that might even just help us talk as we go on. Yeah, I mean, I guess in the simplest form is that the fact that uh, I saw the potential of network technology, the web and that kind of stuff, but continue to see its, sort of its ability to connect people ebbing away uh, further and further from its kind of utopian vision. And it, it was frustrating that also then technology was coming into education spaces like art schools, but was really not, not enhancing the spaces in any capacity. It was just providing each storage or doing things that just didn't or pretending to enhance education it frustrated me that there was all this talk of digital technology doing all these wonderful things and yet it was doing none of those and yet universities and colleges were spending more and more money on technology but I didn't see that it was actually benefiting that the students or the staff in any kind of way um, and in particular obviously the obvious thing is I've been using Blackboard since day zero and, and I'm not a big fan of it still um, and it, I didn't see that it was doing anything other than course, costing the university a lot of money. You know, so Blackboard is reportedly like £300,000 a year uh, for an institute to have it running. I know that in, it's in the TEF report for the University of Southampton. They spent £4 million on upgrades to Blackboard over the last four years. It seems like an awful lot of money for something that I don't feel enhances studio or even classrooms in any way beyond providing like a really nice storage a permanent storage for files that we might want students to look at but it doesn't do any, anything beyond having a neatly organized folder on your desk with printed this paper you know so it so that was annoying me i suppose yeah i think we're, <laughs> still, we're, still, we're still annoyed but we've still got that board and um, anyway um, yeah but maybe going to this from what i understand is of material of interest is a kind of thing but it's so Needing to get beyond simply, oh, there's the future, does something, and you know, the storage, it's just the storage that yeah. that really is a real problem. We're, we're a community of makers here, so you seem to have gone at this problem in, in that way, in sort of social technical way of saying, right, you know, what, what's this stuff doing? What, or what are we doing with it? Well, mm -hmm. and, how it and so forth. And I know. In fact, it came up a lot in the in the behind the scenes about you have you, you have the, the phrase of delight like design, which yeah. I think morphed a bit actually. Yeah, so I suppose we can talk about that. But maybe if you start with that point, because then that, and just maybe could you just describe a little bit about some of the early quite making points here? You know, what what is it you how how did you go about this? What did you start to build? Sure. And how did you characterize that in terms of your your term of life and design? Okay. Lots of questions in there. Um, so, I mean, the first thing, I, the main thing I thought about was that we, that as a group of educators or a group of students and whatever, we're often working on projects, problems together, um, and often those problems and projects end up quite siloed. So you'd see students go away for a brief or a project, and they kind of go and do their thing, 
and they come back with, you know, a week later with something. Um, and potentially they wouldn't I suppose share all those things or they keep them somewhere. So I was kind of interested in the networked ability of, of the fact that if people work together more and collaborate and co-create, they could come up with more interesting ideas and solve more difficult problems. But a lot of that was sort of siloed and, and technology systems kind of provide the same siloing. It's like you should look at it on your own. So yeah. I wanted to think about a way, how could we take the exciting and interesting conversations and the materials that are being developed by everyone in a space um, and how is it somewhere that would allow everyone to access and sort of play with that and do different things. So it's more about sort of showing, I guess, what people were thinking, but making everyone kind of comfortable with showing out loud. So to begin with, I just wanted to think about Firstly, the materials that we use for projects or for pro, you know, research projects or student projects and say, well, where could we put those? It might be a bit more engaging so that it's not just a file and that maybe there's a different way of showing that. So I started thinking about spatial interfaces originally, um, which kind of had a bit of a early sort of computer interfaces were a bit more spatial than they kind of ended up being some more files or folder structure. So I kind of played around with that idea and a lot of it was just sort of showing things to students and saying, would this, does this engage, you know, the materials were presented in this way, how would you engage with them? You know, would it be different in terms of the way you thought about them? Um, and someone just connecting like objects together and saying, well, if this is a deck of slides and this is a project brief and this is some images and they were laid out spatially, would you kind of want to follow those paths? So it's kind of, again, I guess trying to get people to think about the journey that they're on at various points and then bring, um, Bring that to the front through the materials and the things that we create and make whenever you're doing some making something or doing something. So that was the kind of genesis. In terms of the delightful design stuff, that was really off the fact that um, and more and more interfaces were becoming more and more clunky, I guess, and it's true, you know. And I felt there was a layer of sort of you know, well, well, things seem to be getting worse still, but there seems to be a layer of confusion in trying to use stuff. And the idea was that you that rather than just being a lot of people were talking about interface design and it being like fun and making you kind of happy and delightful. <laughs> but it was more about, yeah, like putting those silly characters and whatever on. I was more interested in the idea that if you felt if you felt that you could move through something and you felt empowered, that through that, you know, and delight in the term I was trying to sort of push on, which I did change later on, um, that you'd have some fun with the materials and the things you're looking at, that maybe you'd just make it a bit more interesting. I mean, that was kind of the early stuff. I know, I think you're saying about, um, when you read it years ago, it's absolutely impenetrable, probably delays and the British kind of things. Yeah. Um, so I kind of, and it does, yeah, that seems to be worse and worse. Now we have the multi factor of what they're doing. Oh, it's a bullish business. But I guess, so let's come back in a minute to the lot of the time and things, and also the way that some of the challenge to the buyer, not yeah, yeah. in a you know, negative way, but no, actually, no. Yeah. Um, I just want to pick up a bit more because you, you glossed a little bit between some really complicated things that you yeah. do. And I actually, I think this was something that happened in the Bible. It was a, a moment in the Bible. And so actually, I hope you don't mind me referring to it. No, because it was good. I, I, I enjoyed it. It sounds like connections. And um, so, so um, as a member of Star, uh, Adam had to have two sermons yet. Um, so, uh, it, it, it was, you know, it was quite a, a complicated conversation and so forth, a very coaching conversation. But I think there needed to be that moment that happened quite early in the conversation where everyone, although it was clear in the documentation, but it needed to sort of be aired in the room. This isn't really about technology. No. And that's what's really, I think, really important about what do. And you, you referred a number of times to the space, spatial, yeah. so, so I want to know. Come back to this a little bit more. Um, and I, some, I think something I really do share with you is feeling about needing two, two things, sort of both in terms of like on a screen and so forth, but I actually crave a way of being able to see things in a more spatial way. And I think it's been, it's, it's so much, it's a letterbox feel. And, and we even need to become a very vertical experience. I find that really, really hard. But, um, <clears throat> And it's just fascinated me that the, the kind of spatiality 
So on the screen, as we as, as seem to long before break mm -hmm. um, and, I, and, I, and it's interesting the way you develop the volume and the kind of um, the kind of blocks and so forth. Yeah, yeah. But then the other important layer, here, and this is again the moment happened the while was it's also about the space you're yeah. in and how how much actually you're here to do this about being together. And I, do you want to just say a little bit more than about? Oh, no, actually, so the, the other bit that you've lost for you, how did you really make this happen with you? Because you know, it's not just, <laughs> what do you think of this? How did you build the circumstances in which you could engage people? So what, what stuff could you make? And how long did that take you? Um, how long you making it out? <laughs> how did you then bring that into a classroom? I and mean, I'm just really fast. So sorry, there's a lot there. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's start with a few of those building block stuff. Okay. How do you even bring this stuff into a social situation and share it in what you have, kind of in that kind of, kind of very practical sense of building things, you know, preparation, or ideas, preparation, making, bringing it into a situation, probably in a situation where the infrastructure is not great, and then also trying to make it make sense for that interaction. Or what? And then we'll come back to the kind of space and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I was, I was fortunate or unfortunate to be starting with games design BA at the same time as starting my PhD. So I had yeah. a captive yeah. audience of students I could take advantage of because yeah. I was in charge of yeah. the I was in charge of the room for every session, you know, that I was in. So it allowed me then to basically sort of, you know, the week before, two weeks before, think, how might I activate this space differently with a piece of technology? Um, yeah. and that'd be so I tried lots of different apps to begin with, just ones that were kind of designed for collaboration to see what would happen. I mean, a key thing to remember here as well is that Node Noggin and all the apps I used, uh, I used them in the physical space, you know, so that it's part of activating the classroom. I don't like to call it classroom studio. Um, yeah. So that was, so it was kind of just testing stuff with students, knowing that they were, we need to think about something, develop an idea, but just put a tool in front of them and say, okay, let's gather our information into this tool. And to so begin so with. About, what do you mean then about this tool? So to what begin with, it was you. Okay, so well, to begin with, I just used stuff that was off the shelf. So okay. I used things like Etherpad, which is like a, effectively Google Docs yeah. for multiple users, but it was an open sourcing I just run on my own server. So to begin with, I was just like, okay, we're going to use this document to write up some ideas. So one of the kind of early things that happened was, this is really early on, and this whole PhD took like seven, eight years probably, including COVID, which is just stupid. Um, uh, we had a workshop where we were designing, we were designing, so there's a thing called a little printer, which is an internet, internet of things printer that would print out little publications, and it was a tiny little hardware, piece of hardware, and it got a little smiley face, and it's supposed to be fun, and delightful. So we had a workshop, where we had we were coming up with ideas to come up with like a silly publication that would come out of this machine and normally what i would do is i would have said to everyone okay like write, come up with some ideas shout them out write them down like, you know bit of paper or whatever but in this instance i was like okay let's try and use the shared document to come up with ideas knowing that firstly that when you connect you can come up with your own name so you don't have to have you have to sign in, you just make up a name, so people call themselves Crazy Squirrel or whatever, and they don't have all these silly names. So everyone's laughing at the fact that there's silly names appearing. And suddenly, like, and it's not that, this isn't rocket science, and I don't know, you know, but this was a long while ago. Suddenly, like, more ideas were coming out of the room than I'd ever seen when we do it in the other format, because they were riffing off. Basically, what we had is on, on the projector, I had the shared document up, and so this sort of live seeing all these ideas come and suddenly like they're generating many more ideas than they would have done if they tried to write it down or say it out loud and whatever in less time. And I was like, wow, we've got loads more options now to play with. So that was kind of the first instance, just trying something out. Later on, um, I mean, I've been using Slack anyway, which is just a communication platform like Teams um, to get people to discuss stuff outside of the studios. That's slightly different, not really in the studio. So these, sorry, there's a lot of tools in a sense of starting to open up principle or, or possibilities. Yeah. You know? But then you make a shift because it's starting to make your own. Yeah. And uh, did you have, do you already have a skill set for that? Or I mean, what? I'd already, yeah. I'm, no, 
kind of skipping separate. I know how to build separate. I know how to build stuff with code. Yeah. So um, and I and I know I knew kind of what I wanted, which is sort of multiplayer. Yeah. So I just started looking for tool open source or free software tools that would allow me to sort of take control of that. Um, but also what happened was I, because I started building my own tool, what I could then do is that when I tried something in the studio with the students, I could see the response to it and I could literally go away and just make changes that week. And so the following week, we do the same activity with enhancers. So I'm, sk I'm skipping around a lot. But um, one of the things we found was that um, when I did the first version, I sort of just built a version of Etherpad effectively, which is always text. So people were just writing text and they could see each other's text. Um, and one student was like, we were trying again, we were just thinking about discussing a game or a problem or whatever. And one student afterwards said, you know, that's really interesting to see everyone else's ideas. But I, I was really like overwhelmed by just seeing everyone else's ideas. It'd be great if I could have my own like view of just my ideas and then decide and I want to see other people's ideas. And that's how we then merged to have like multiple screens of experiences. So depending on what you wanted from a session, depended on what kind of screen you'd have. So often we'd have a big screen with a kind of spatial view, but the students or the staff would have a single screen, often mobile phone, when they just want to be putting in their ideas. And then they'd be sort of glancing at big screen and going, okay, what are other people saying? Um, but I was able to change that, you know, in a week. Just, yeah, just, and you said it earlier, <laughs> I had to just do that. It's great. So, but that is quite wonderful. I, you haven't seen the codes on it, so I'm putting in front of some proper computer scientists and they will tell you otherwise. <laughs> and it's, but, but, I, but I suppose what I'm partly interested in, so you do make quite a shift, right, from using off-the-shelf stuff sure. to almost all men your own stuff, or do you have a kind of ecosystem of these different things going on? There is an ecosystem. Um, so, I, so, I mean, for those who really want to know, I mainly use Vue, which is a JavaScript framework, so that's an open source framework. Um, that manages effectively the interface. Yeah. And then the back end is um, something called CouchDB, which is an Apache, again, open source, uh, no SQL database, which no one wants to know any of this stuff. Um, it's, it's good to know. It's, it's, no, it's good to hear this, I think, because we, yeah, it's, it's common. It's, so those are the two main components. It's yeah. a JavaScript and um, framework. And then there's a, a NoSQL database uh, for yeah. all of that. There are. You just say I just, but actually there's these bits, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were selected for, you know, again, they were selected through conversations. That's what a lot of this was about. Because I knew what. So originally I knew that I needed multiplayer, and I knew that I needed it in real time. So again, lots of early computer stuff was multiplayer in real time, and sort of shifted away to mainframe single user stuff. Um, and so that, I was kind of digging around. Of course, most of the things that do that well are either owned by Google or are Google products. And of course, um, my concern with that, as many of you know, and, it is, uh, and everyone's concern is that they are hoovering up lots of data. And I didn't want, I thought if I'm using, if I'm going to use this tool to think together with students and staff and whatever, I don't want any of my thinking hoovered up by anyone, you know, unless I say so. So I knew that. Google would be a problem, but to begin with, there was a tool called Firebase, which worked really well, but Google owned it effectively. And so again, I was just so I just talked to people and said, look, this is what I'm trying to make. What's out there? And CouchDB sort of came out of those conversations. Yeah. So a lot of my practice in general is just which I, you know, um, it's just doing it out in the open, not only building and trying stuff, but also yeah, just talking to people. Yeah, that's a very important part of your work. Yeah, it made, you know, it's, it, yeah. yeah. So you, I know it's not clear, your PhD has, has its own server, really, or I mean, your, your yeah. practice. And, um, yeah, I know. Which, which, <laughs> again, it's, it's not a just, it's like, yeah, you have to, you, so you, you kind of constantly, there's all this sort of testing and iteration and yeah. you hit a problem problems and you then go away and sort of research it to work out how to fix it or to how to make yeah. this go here. And yeah, I mean you touch a bit more than when you're describing about the say the student might have on their screen mm -hmm. and then it's on the larger screen. So again getting back to the spatial stuff. I just maybe just ask a little bit more on that. I'm really quite interested in the rhythms that come out of that and over 
in it over hours over days. Mm -hmm. so maybe this could come right at the end of the music week, a sleep sure. project. Yeah. But let's just stay in the sort of sense of the threshold of the classroom. Yeah. Students coming in. Um, how, what, and also, I suppose, is this, has this all been universally enjoyed by students, or are there, are there cases where you're struggling to implement, to, to work with students with this kind of approach? But I suppose I'm just also interested in there's these different spaces. There's, you know, literally like oh, we're sitting around these tables and there might be different groups of students and they've got their different dynamics. Mm -hmm. and, but you've got these different, uh, so there's those there's those spaces. There's the space you take up and how and how you move through that and yeah. how you um, and how you work. And then there's the spaces on the screen. So yeah. how, how, can you just talk me through a little bit more there about how it kind of feels? I suppose it's kind of what was. Because it's like an aesthetic view of careers in here. I think it's really interesting. Okay. Um, is it true? I mean, it's a bit of a tricky question. Well, I, mean, just to, I mean, also just, just to kind of sense of what was some of the kind of um, commonality with that kind of approach to teaching you've experienced. And, um, and yeah, I, mean, I suppose because have you become very used to it? And it just is a. Because like, if I try to do that, I would have to think it through so carefully. Yeah. <laughs> right? Um, yeah, so it just, is. I'm just trying to unpack it a bit more because it is very close to you, I know. Yeah, I think it is tricky. I'm, I can, I can run those sessions with this tool because I know I'm, because I get I'm not very used to it, and it is a little bit harder. And I think I've tried to sort of spell out in the PhD approaches that you might take if you wanted to use the tool in a space, um, but you have to kind of be quite confident with what you're doing. In terms of like how it feels, it's quite. So we used it in different ways. So that's the thing. So one of the ways that's worked really well, um, and this kind of extends the space is, is, and I've had staff come in and see these sessions and they find them quite overwhelming to be fair. But we've had it where students or someone is presenting their work and everyone else in the room is using a single view to basically give feedback. So rather than sort of collect feedback in person, and what, what I found from that is a couple of things. One is that you get way more feedback from the room and I've noticed when you ask people, um, you also allow, you know, stops like the highest paid person's opinion in the room, the hippo in the room from sort of leading everything and stopping me from leading stuff as well, because the opinions can come. Um, no one's been rude in those, but they might have been brought right sometimes. Um, and then what's, so that's quite hectic though. So you've got someone presenting like 15 minutes and the work is everyone else in this room rather than writing notes in your on your single computer, you're writing it in one shared space. So oh, that was, yeah, anonymously, yeah, yeah. Um, and the, then afterwards, what happens is the, the student who's got that feedback will then sort of digest it after the session and sort of read through, and they start to then, they then will maybe go into the spatial view and start to arrange things and sort of cluster them. And what I often do as well is then, if there's particular moments where students, you can do emoji, I put it on another sort of thing, you can do like emojis and stuff. So when there's, um, so you see like this box here. Yeah. When people like kind of like an idea, they just kind of put random emojis on things. Or like sometimes they put in silly little pictures and stuff. It gets quite playful. So people start doing silly things. It doesn't quite look as good as this, the actual version that we, we use later on. But um, so that, it makes it really fun, you know, yeah. actually. Even though we're thinking about stuff or we're discussing an idea for a game or a project or, you know, it's whatever, like this afternoon we're going to talk, try and talk about what practice-based research is. Um, it becomes quite a fun activity. And suddenly you've got a cluster of like 20 people's thoughts around something that you then can take away and think about, you know. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. How does that differ from a, a group session where you have posters and you stick them on that? Because that looks like posters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the the difference is it's anonymous. Uh, the difference is you don't have to get up and do it. You don't have to get up and put it anywhere. Um, okay, it's still a bit anonymous. I think it's it's harder. I, 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 I okay, think well, that's one that but, but yeah, yeah. it's not that much different. No. Yeah. It grows. It does. It does sort of archive them different ways. Yeah, you can't. So the, yeah, yeah. So you. Yeah. Yeah. You. Can, the other thing as well is that you can. You can. You can put pictures in, and you can. Yeah. So I suppose there's some. I don't know. There's, there's obviously multiple. Yeah, that's limiting because you're on the screen. Yeah, no, it's true. It's true. Well, yeah, it's, it's not. Yeah, the other thing is you've got you have other views, so you have your own views of the data, so you can then afterwards manipulate that, so you can lay things out as you wish. 
so there can be a shared space, but then it can also be your own sort of space. And also, I mean, how many people have got photos of post note yeah. sessions on their phones that they've never looked at after the post note session? And I've got loads, you know, whereas this is just, you can go straight back to this space individually or as a group and review it so often you know again the students will come i've seen students come back to this and sort of then start to arrange things and you know allow some thinking time to happen um and it, yeah and but i do think the act of believe me i some i mean i my wife says i've got quite good hand writing she's got terrible hand writing you know even the act of writing the post note can be quite intimidating and just and even if you've got to stick it up i mean i've done it before where we do like you try and get feed. We've done it with feed. So feedback is another example where we've got done the post note feedback, like what's working well, what isn't, etc. And I've did it with post notes for years. That's what we we're encouraged to do. Um, and you kind of get students writing it and then gather it together, and only one person would hand it over, and you'd hope you didn't recognise the writing because you'd recognise some students writing. We've only got 25, 35 students. Um, I know. And then, but did, but then I sw swapped it to using Node Noggin and getting them to colour it and also to get them to emoji up things they thought were, they agreed with. And I saw way more feedback, way more um, honest feedback, you yeah. know, because they knew that I couldn't tell who'd written what. And also the great thing was then I could have it up on the big screen and we'd start to sort of, I could answer some of that feedback straight away. So like, yes, but, go on. And I'm actually sorry, no, but I think this is also one of the things that's really important here, because again, it comes back to this point, that, and I think you developed it so nicely in the environment, and it's so important what it is to put out. It's not just, because it, yes, you could almost do this, but there's a certain kind of interaction that you are, you are developing in a very sort of consistent way over a long period of time. But I think really was what the work was about. Yeah. This sort of sorting, ordering, sharing, and it becomes a, a, a long process. It's not like a workshop where you put post it up and that's great. And there's this there's this sort of accumulating, right? Yeah. Yeah, there's loads of little design decisions that make it really, you know, like you don't have to log in and all this it's really quick yeah. to get going. Yeah. So you can instantly yeah. start the thing. You, you know, you can use it on any device pretty much. Um, you know, I mean, even, what was it, yesterday? Yeah, yes, yeah, yesterday. <laughs> oh, weird. I mean, yes, so yesterday, it was back at the start of term. I know that all the students are stressing out about the fact that they've got a few weeks left to hand in their final major projects. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I did, I said, okay, we're going to have a bit of fun. Open up a node noggin. We're going to just tell me what you, you know, what you're worried about. What's, what's the opportunities that are coming up? And then, you know, and they all put similar things. I'm stressed about build, putting, bringing everything together, and I don't know about this, and I'm not sure about that. Um, but you could see, I mean, you can feel it in the room. The students see on this on the big screen the same concerns, and they're like, "Oh, it's not me." And then they're emoji, they're like, you know, then they're creating these silly little devil emojis or whatever. Say, so I really, really agree with the fact I can't get my WordPress to do whatever. And the level of anxiety it just drops. And then in the session, I just say to the students, "Okay." That we can deal with Thursday. Oh, I didn't know people were worried about that. What about if we do this? And you can, you, so you can, it becomes a really, I don't know, digestion is the right word, but it's like, you know, there's that real interchange mm -hmm. you can have with everyone. So again, it's interesting, you, you were turning your head there. There's this sense of space, you know, yeah. you're talking. Yeah, you know, we can check that idea, but we're over here now. We're doing, and I think that's kind of what was coming out of your work. It was really interesting. But it was not just a practice around making these this work no. in the opinions, but it, it, it is this whole environment that you you were talking about all the time and the way you were operating. I I I'll maybe just ask a couple more questions about it. So yeah, sure. not, and maybe one thing that could come through in the moment, I'm sure, is well how well this works across different disciplines and so forth. But maybe I'll let mm. colleagues come in on that. Can I I mean one thing I just wanted to say that you said I had a captive audience. <laughs> I want to flip that over and just remind you they had a captive researcher, and I think that's a really beautiful thing. <laughs> and they, they, they've gained so much out of that, and I, and I just think that's really beautiful. Um, just quickly, um, uh, this there's two, uh, well, three things, let's do quickly. Mm -hmm. I just want to ask you just to pick up again about this thing about delightful design, because yeah. that's kind of turned and it, yeah. and it got pushed around a lot, by and, and I want to just see how you. <laughs> Describe it now, sure. Because I think that's an interesting point about how your work landed as a as work for the community, right? It's, it was 
what's the contribution you're making, not just for what you do, mm -hmm. but where does it go? And then maybe after that, I just, just touch on quickly about open access, because I think sure. you're all common understanding or common interest like that. And then, if, and then you could also maybe say something about your current project. But let's just 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 to be very brief. Yeah. To, what what did you? How did you navigate the shift from that term to life design, and how do you think that's described your work for a kind of future community? To sure. I skip to another picture on here just because it kind of relates. Um, well, it does relate. It's the same. You put it through several iterations. Yeah, yeah. So the, I mean, I'm now calling education technology design principles. Um, but, the, but it started as this idea of delightful design. So it's this idea of how, you know, you might want to, how the, we, you know, are, we're surrounded by machines in lots of different ways. And often our interactions with machines are pretty incredible in lots of yeah. different ways. And I sort of, you know, started by documenting machines doing silly things. Why would a machine do that? It's supposed to be helping me. You know, that's the point of these machines. Um, and so it started with this idea of how do you empower people? And lots of people were just talking about being just fun and delightful. And that's just where the term started. Um, and it, so I just kind of hung on to that thinking I could take that term and say, well, what about if we thought about delightful design in education tools? And that it might, you know, and also because our studios are inherently playful, I think, in terms of what we do, you know, in terms of yeah. art and design, that kind of stuff. So I quite, I didn't like the term, um, but. We were very mean to you, weren't we? we took it away. No, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> you were right to take them away, and you did a better. I mean, I should have recorded those bits because you did a better job of sort of taking it away. Um, I yeah. So the idea, I think, the way I want to take it forward is to present a series of principles for people yeah. making tools. Yeah. But if they are to use them in education spaces, to actually make them enhance those spaces, because all yeah. the rhetoric in all of the research basically says. Bring, you know, you get this tool teams or whatever, and it's going to make your life better. It's going to do all these wonderful things. But all the evidence shows that it doesn't really do those, the things that they purport it's going to do, you know. Um, and so I'm kind of saying, if you want to actually use technology in a space with students or researchers or whatever, that, the, that these principles need to be adhered to. And those principles are around, so free software is not that it's free as to buy. It's free as in its freedom so that you have the ability to look at source code, do things with the source code that you want and understand what the machine is doing. And so at the moment we're building some algorithms, um, but they will all be transparent. So you understand what that algorithm does. Mm. Um, you could get your data out, you know, so, you know, if we put, I mean, my word, you put stuff in Blackboard and then like a couple of years later it says, watch out, we're going to delete all your stuff. And I say, how do I get the stuff out? Yeah. <laughs> it's my stuff, you know. So the idea is, yeah. So it's like, get this, can I get the stuff out easy? Yeah. Um, the other principle is that you should be able to run it, you should be able to run everything yourself and be able to do it locally. So again, if we are, so as in a quick example, um, you know, there's lots of other tools that have spatial arrangements. So there's a tool called I always trot this one out, Padlet. But there's obviously a tool called Padlet, which I'm vice chancellor, I think, used at one point. Um, <laughs> yeah, you did. You did. Um, which runs on a server somewhere, right? And you've got no control over that. But Padlet hoover up all the data of everyone that's putting stuff in. So it gets your IP, it knows where you are in the world, it knows what hardware you're running, all that kind of stuff. Um, and you lose instant control. So the idea with this is that if you're going to build something, you should be able to just run it privately. So if we were to have, if we wanted to have a thinking session, or what you know, and use this tool for thinking together because it is in the tools of thought space that we might want to do that without anyone knowing. Yeah. But we want to have a space that we can collectively have that data that works in a way um, that you can add to it. So again, it's like you know, can you add views at any point? So you know, the the new thing that we were, we were playing with this afternoon is a new view that allows you to bring um, the data around in a different way. And yeah. The, by default, everything should be private, which goes back to the anonymous stuff. You don't, I don't know who's typing what. You can give yourself any kind of name that you want. Doesn't no one knows that? No one sees that. You're not on the internet. You could not be on the internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So ideally, the scenario would be I'd have a little box that we could just plug into the LAN, the local area network, and I'd tell you what that address of that box yeah, was. Presumably, use a Raspberry Pi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's the only way I'm going to monetize this is by selling the cute little yeah, box. But, <laughs> I think you know just about it. What? <laughs> well, actually, yeah, 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 I can ask, there's a point on that as well. Yeah, yeah, go on. I start this question because 
Now, I think you've really nicely gone through some of those points. But this, yeah, this is why it isn't just the lab design. You've got this no, sure. of ethics here and a series of considerations and so forth that you all you are always keeping in, mm. in, in uh, relation and so forth. And it's yeah, yeah. very complex, and I think that's why it was a really interesting discussion we had. Um, where you, yeah, we 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 just want wanted to say to you, yeah, you're doing a lot more than you want to claim. And I think there's another <laughs> side to this. Your work is incredibly collaborative in lots of different ways. And yeah. I think it's a real testament to you that you brought us together at PhD because of that's hard. You know, it's very hard to to pull off a PhD where you you're being so genuinely collaborative. And that comes to my just just want to say quickly about the openness of it. Sure. It's not. And this is something where I think we probably share something actually. We don't necessarily talk about it a lot. Um, and certainly sometimes you give me some good ideas of things for you like that. You know. Not just the idea of making research open access, but making your research open, i.e., mm -hmm. putting the shit out there. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I, I've been putting my latest project about AI you know, and structures, and I've got some index cards, they call them online. Mm -hmm. And the other day I was thinking, oh, I really must go back and fix that one at the beginning, and I know that's kind of wrong. And I'm just like, I've got time to do it. But then I just thought the other day, no, 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 it's fine. That's the point. Yeah, it, it's okay to not all be perfect. It's, it's notes and it's stuff, that, but that, you do that a lot, don't you? you know, yeah, yeah, that. yeah. I've got another ridiculous slide on here somewhere. Where is it? Find it. That's task. Yeah, this thing here, um, which is kind of the ecosystem. Yeah, so I, I mean, I put everything online basically, and wherever possible, have it. Commons license. I mean, my PhD is. And, and it's, it's you put on, you put it all online, but you, yeah. what you mean here also as it unfolds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really interesting. Yeah. Because we've got all this agenda about, oh, I've been I've written this, don't make it back. Brilliant. But I, I, I really love the fact that you, this idea you, you let it out. Yeah. It's a mess. No, I mean, this, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. I do. There's blog. Sure I mean, there's half of these things like that research notes, which says it's a longer blog. It's basically a series of unfinished blog posts. You know, there's yeah. one I put up there last week, and it's just like, and it was sat, and I wanted to share it with someone. I was like, oh, I should finish that, and I thought, forget it, I just share it now. Yeah. You know, and so I just, yeah, I used to, it's this idea of thinking out loud as well. I can refer to this stuff. I can obviously search my own things, um, but also then, I, you know, if other people do happen to look at it, then they they can kind of, you know, they can comment, contribute. So every, yeah, so I, you know, I've done podcasts, YouTube channels. There's random blog posts, short micro posts. All the code is out there. I've got like a. Must be hilarious. It was, oh, it's so bad though. I should have like millions of followers, and I have next to none. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't want to know if anyone's following. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so then I've got into you know, there's a Discord community and there's other things. So it's all a bit, yeah. <laughs> but that's delightful in itself. It's too bad. I don't know why I do it. I think well, I I, I really appreciate that we've gone through quite a lot of detail about the, the overall work you've done. Sure. I know it could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's much nicer for to come in. It may, it may come up. Um, but yeah, it's, I'll keep an eye on the team thing as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want to ask questions? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I thought Nick might have been. Oh, I'm sorry, I've been taking the first thing that struck is it's kind of the opposite of the metaphors, right? In the sense that, yeah, it just, that it's all oh, yeah, like to do with VR and immersion yeah. in, the in the tech space itself. This is kind of I think they're sorry. I think they're saying the sound's been rubbish for now. So, yeah. sound was bad. I just need to look at the post bits. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, sorry, everyone. If the sound was bad for now, we can't change it. Oh, no, sound was bad. Yeah, yeah. It's cool. So it's remote. For the hours, uh, opposite of the metaverse. But the, the point I was wondering was that the, the metaverse. I mean, the sharp end of this, that the whole world of technology and software is capitalist yeah. enterprise. And you're trying to do something in that, as I guess many others are, that is that applies in this that yeah. you know, it's kind of anti capitalist Yeah, yeah. Uh, how how do you do that on track? Is there not a risk that it just gets absorbed into that world and becomes a product, uh, becomes branded and capitalized by somebody else or you know, how, how can you operate this on that within that machine? Because you're in a sense, you are in the machine. Yeah. Even yeah. though you're 
To all the, I mean, all the people that are working on tools like this that are trying to sort of be anti-surveillance capitalism and all that kind of stuff tend to license them with a particular sort of a Faro GNU 3 license, which means that you can't, people can't just take, if they make something from your code, they can't lock it away. They have to allow the future products to be under the same conditions. So that's how most people are sort of ensuring that they kind of can stay out of that machine. That was a word of games. No, no. Somebody comes to and says, here's a big pile of money and we're going to actually brand this and use it. That's different. That'll be fine, though, because as long as they don't say that we're going to lock up the code and it's not going to follow those principles, they want to say, look, we'll give you all this money, just sit and fiddle around with this. Great. So that fine, go for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's when your principles are really tested. Yeah. It would have, yeah, the gun. Sort of KLF mode, we could do that. So I think you to be able to Oh, that would be so good. And so, yeah, yeah, no. So far, I'm not going to make it a better. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> it. Would have to follow the principles, and I just don't, I didn't, wouldn't. The pro, the issue there is that no one's going to do that because the way they want to make money out of software is by having users, yes. numbers of people, and so they want to try to track that information. They need to know those kind of things, and that's how they then have an exit strategy to ensure they can sell it for more. Um, so that you're not going to, no one's going to. And a lot of these tools where people are starting to think about this are really small tools. They're like, you know, this doesn't really work with like 100 people. It will only really work with small groups, you know. And so it's, again, all those tools are like, this is for you to use, not for millions of people to use. Yeah, you know, the principles are about ethics, right? Mm -hmm. And scale seems like a, a vital component of that. And yeah. And also because when Nathan asked about kind of I was thinking about, you know, you said people have been uh, sort of on time. Yeah. But that is partly because they're all in a room together. Yeah. Is that not their relationship that Sonoma is kind of mapping out? Yeah. Um, questions. And so I guess I'm wondering about both the scale as something that you sort of explicitly thought through um, and also something kind of came out of the, the process, right? Um, yeah. And maybe also about like what happens if like it's not just about the small stuff, but to me there's something about the in-personness mm. of it. So does it work in an online space? Have you done a kind of an exclusively online community? Okay. Um, yeah, so I mean, some people are terming this stuff as small technology. That seems to be a term that's being bounded around. Um, I don't think I'd thought about scale to begin with, but I, but I did think about it being personal. So I think probably scale was always thought about from that point of view. Yeah. Um, and I guess, I, you know, as, you, as I sort of tested it with slight, slight, slightly larger groups, you could see things starting to fall apart and it wasn't that was useful. So I, I kind of, I just knew that it would be for a small group of people, you know, in, uh, most, and again, that's also because all the other tools are about having millions of users. You know, it's like how, you know, use, you know, every, like every other spatial tool you see predominantly is about, they have all these badges used by Disney, used by, C, you know, BBC or whatever. They've all got the same badges. It's like, does everyone use, does everyone use every app? You know, um, so yeah, just, it's like, so that, but that's also born out of this, you know, surveillance capitalism ethics point of view is that, that was all it's all about big data and lots of people. So I knew that it would always not be about lots of people. Um, I mean, I think this was the point as well that came up. You know, the important moment though about this is your practice. It's not about that you've made this or or you sell it or whatever. It yeah. doesn't matter. Even if you did sell it, you're still going to practice a certain way of it. That's that's a big Yeah, yeah. And that was what I think was really quite complex for us to deal with in your world because well, there was this sort of wave coming across. So, wow, this is like really, there's so much going on here, and, and it's hard to, it's kind of an assembly, just, And so, I suppose that one thing about the scale is does this, has this gone on beyond you? I mean, it's no longer in you, and just at the moment because it is, or because that's really how it kind of works in this because that's. That's how you practice. And um, 
Or is it, have you seen it being used by others? And, what, and, what, and if so, what's that? Tell them what's that been like? Um, I haven't seen it being used by others. I don't really track that kind of information. People yeah. have asked me about using it. I mean, one of the pushbacks I've had is, would it work with, would it work with groups of students that aren't gaming students? Yeah. Um, so there's a bit of that. Um, well, and also the question about purely online. Yeah. I suppose with obviously with COVID, that must have been something where you didn't do that. Yeah, a little bit, but it just didn't. Yeah, it didn't really work. It's not practice, is it? That's that's. It didn't work the same, and it yeah, it didn't really work the same. It was um, less engaging. You know, we had to have another thing for video, so you'd have to have Teams or whatever as well. Um, I don't you know? I mean, if you. I mean, we've used we've used like mural or mural or something at one point with a thing. And it's like <laughs> it was like you know, and that was like we did a lot of that online. And that I mean, that, it was just a collection of it was at that point just a collection of post notes that were digital, so it didn't really do anything else. Yeah. And also, a lot of those tools, if you look at those tools, it show they often have like cursors and things to show who's online and they're flying around yeah. and it's really distracting yeah. and then it's like everyone in the, and also you know you identify yourself so oh, i'm the head of department so i'm here you know everyone's like oh better go over there um <laughs> you know it's that kind of stuff it is isn't it you know or you try and also because then you yeah a lot of most of these tools identify you in some way yeah. and so that yeah and on but yeah just using it purely online it doesn't it's not designed to work that way yeah, and you know. that's, I can imagine sometimes you get bashed as, oh, you know, you know, the, you know you just talk. but again, that's not what it's not. No. What it is, it's really, and that, that's the complexity about what you do is really, really important. Well, I think, I mean, it sort of speaks to that fact that, like, most tools are, like, they're deceptive about their purpose, right? Yeah. Like, Google is a data yeah. gathering institution, yeah. it's not a tool provider. Yeah. And so you as an individual user are not their priority. Whereas with this, you as the individual user are the, like the only reason this exists is for that goal. Yeah. And so it's like there's a transparency of intent that I think is sort of antithetical to other things that are ostensibly in the same space. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean you get again, it's yeah, most of these, yeah, nearly all the tools will Uber update in different ways. And it's just and then, and I yeah and that, again if you're trying to if you're using a tool, a network any any tool to think should it should kind of respect your privacy and understand that you're thinking through that device whether that be a notepad or whatever and most network technology doesn't respect any of that which is just don't, yeah yeah that annoys me. <laughs> They said the sound got better apparently when we started, so that's good. Does anyone online want to ask a question? Does anyone, I know you might have stopped. Um, I, mean, that's, <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, I the hour, actually. Sorry. No, it's fine. Because you watched Snog in the Dark when you were young. That's the I probably did. Is that how you know what Snog in the Dark Yeah. I don't think there's any questions online. But... Okay, Barbara. I've got one here. Go on, just and one of the things that I thought was interesting was the idea of bringing, so you know, when you said the way in which um, Adam, Adam was going through the process and he, he run into a problem and he just fix it, that's kind of what you do when you do your own research, but you know how to fix it. It's like when you're writing a paper, you don't know how to do that because it comes from the work, it comes from the research, it comes from the practice. Similarly, when you put out things that are dead ends or you feel like you, know, you, you were trying this and it didn't work. Yeah, yeah. That's just the basic scientific method. That's why the science is crazy. Yeah, yeah. Articles like crazy. Yeah. Because you can, you can put something out and the failure is important, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. People can glean information from it. Whereas in humanities and arts, if you write an arts and said, I was going to make this argument, but it didn't really work. Uh, no, he's <laughs> no, going to publish that. Sure, yeah. so, um, but, but I do think it, it just slots right into everything that all research is a process that has to be reified at certain moments. But that doesn't mean that the reification is the thing that stands forever. No. And so it's always fixable. If you would return to it, it's just recursive process and moving things along. And that's what was evidenced in your 
decent back on and in and in the practice that we were doing. It was practice to to explore and research yeah. ideas. Yeah, yeah, and obviously well yeah, it was all practice based. And so yeah, yeah all the all the things you know, all the things I made, be that a silly blog post or whatever, etc., that was all part of the practice. Yeah. So it's a bigger, you know, so I have to list all those things and it wasn't that, you know, everyone necessarily looked at everything. But it's like these are the, this is how I'm well for me it goes back to that idea of thinking through making. Yes. And um and so I'm just using as many ways of making as possible to think yeah. about things. But, but I also learned I think one thing that's kind of I I don't know I I've sent to the work is that given also how busy you are with the other work you do. But it's also a way of maintaining some momentum. Yeah. It's a place to put the thing is it's a place to keep it going. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I think that's really important for us all because we Yeah, we don't have to do things when we don't have much time. And how do we keep that on that? Yeah. And I think it's been a real big thing for life. I think and I don't know, so first of all I thank you for that actually because I think it's been really healthy to hear. Yeah. You're doing stuff. You're, you know, you know, you're not taking the pics of what I'm doing. Stuff. You, 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 know, you can see that you're trying to do things. You're working at it, and and I think that's inspiring for all of us because we're all yeah. time strapped. Mm. Um, doesn't mean we can't hold on to our beliefs. So it's important things to do. And there's the conversations like this that can happen, and I just, just yeah, I just want to thank you. I think we've been a oh, sorry, sorry. Sorry. I you carry on developing. Yeah, I could really quickly talk about this. So there's a workshop this afternoon. So just check it out. Well, obviously, if you go online, if they need to go, then please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, but, but yeah, this, that's, let's. I'll just go to the last bit. Yeah, but if people online need to dash, that's cool. Um, so yeah, I've got a. So this afternoon's workshop, um, we're going to discuss what, try and discuss what practice based research is. Um, and I'm going to put people in teams if there's enough people or whatever, and just use no login as a way of thinking out loud. What we've developed now, so the Web Science Institute have given me some pilot funding to basically get some proper computer scientists to help me out. Um, so what we've developed is the ability for you to take the nodes text that you put in and do a comparison against the reading list. And then it will bring you back the suggestions of what you might want to read but also a little bit of paragraph of text from that reading list book number and all that kind of stuff but the idea is that you well the machine will do it really really quick that you have to decide to wait for a certain period of time so to begin with we called it research while you sleep which is yeah. you have to wait like eight hours so it's sort of saying you need to you know so you press a button and say we've made some notes together go and compare this against some texts and tell me what i should read next or look at next um, in a bit more of an organic fashion. So it's kind of a Google search, but it's multiplayer search, but it also has this time factor. You have to wait for that activity to happen. So the idea, so this afternoon, what we're going to do is I've got mainly stuff from Sun, who's published loads of things. The what, I, right. I'll tell you which, um, I'm gonna, I can tell you which. Apologies, I won't be able to. I know, I know. But the, um, what have I got? I've got. Yeah, loads of these sort of practice. So there's a bunch of books, and this is all out of the the okay. journal that you are in, Jane. So there's a bunch of texts. I know the people online can't see this. That we'll just yeah. care what we write. So it just kind of says if we all say you know if we all so if we all say similar things, it would then suggest oh you should probably read page ten of whatever book or the visual journal thing or whatever you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. So the way yeah, yeah. just read the book. So we did. So I've done. We did one test of it with students. Um, so I took basically a short reading list for a project, and we put that into the system. And I got the students in their groups to write like ideas around the project they were going to make, and then we compared it. And it gave each team a different book to suggest it based on your conversation that you put into Node Login. Yeah. Go and read this book. And I just asked the students. Said, did you read the reading list before? No. <laughs> Well, are you more likely to go and look at this particular text now? Yes. You know, it wasn't like a massive survey, but it's like, well, they might go and actually look at it, you know. So. Oh, no, I actually, I sent them a form. Uh, I marked a form, which I set as anonymous anyway, but yeah. yeah. That's one of the interesting students. Uh, it was almost too, like, how do you, software has facilitated so much information constantly. 
it's just completely overwhelmed by the number of things you can read. Yeah, yeah. And so this is all about some be space in there for some way for discriminating and for limiting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And ends iteration more and more and more reference and yeah. more and more links that you never can follow. Yeah. Right. So I, I basically say, you know, I don't want to use big data sets. The algorithm for doing the comparison is going to be, um, you know, open, and you pick the text that you want to use. I'd be really fascinated to know how that then works because so much of the principle of the, the latest technology yeah. is on. Massive data sets because that's how you get probabilistic learning. But, but it's so sort of fascinating to see. Yeah, that. I went because I went so for this, I went and picked, you know, went for the visual journal, whatever it's called. Um, can't remember, sorry, Sunil. <laughs> <laughs> and I just picked, I just picked chapters in on through the special issues and went, okay, these these I'm could be interesting. So used by <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> But the other thing we're going to do is that um, we're going to get it to what we're also going to do, which we think might be quite fun, is in the next iteration, is get it to create brand new te text from the texts. So if we say something and it says read chapter five or whatever this book, instead of telling you what to read, it will actually just mash up a brand new essay, some description, see what it, see what whether that's any fun or not. That's all right. I mean, I know that the, I did a test in the word. The funny, I wonder if I got it. The word frugal that came up in one of your things, Samuel. Where is it? I thought it was quite cool. Uh, yeah, it's sort of slightly analytic. I know it's a bit weird. Um, <laughs> yeah, there it is. Fl oh, so flum is the word. Flum. Yeah. yeah. So apparently, you, you at some point in the practice PhD toolkit, you must have used the word flum. Yeah. <laughs> so someone had typed flung and it came told me to go and read page 22 of your thing. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Brilliant. Um, so, I'm doing this, I, I feel like I, I, I don't, I'm slightly anxious. I've, you've got a million other things to do. No, I know I've got enough time, but the interview is still up to Get your head. <laughs> it's with a fellowship. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. But um, but it's, it's it's so much more tedious than anything else. You know, doing things like that is terrible, isn't it? So, um, but I, again, sorry. I, no, no. I, just, I just want to thank you and, and for everyone to show appreciation because your your work's brilliant and your I think very inspiring colleague for us to be to have amongst us and, and it's been fantastic to to open up for everything you're doing. So thank you. Well, I hope it was sort of useful. <laughs> <laughs>